Better as One Day, which is based off of that song. Played, and I don't know how long it is, and I know it's a little chilly up here. Let's listen to at least the first verse of the chorus, and we'll take it to the next. Better is one day. Again, it's based on that song we read. It's, it's very much, I, I know why Laura picked it because, and it was something Peva just talked about a moment ago. She went through so much in her life, whether it was the death of her parents or the battle with cancer over these years. She had this desire to live for God here and now, and she loved you and wanted to be a part of our lives, of course. But she had this desire to want to be with God as well. And, and, and what she would say, better is one day to be with God than, than a thousand elsewhere, right? And in a way, Laura is already there. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. And it's kind of hard to grasp, but from a first person perspective, Laura is already in God's presence, right? She's already. Um, experiencing the hope of resurrection and eternal life. And, and the, the, the sad part of death is that we who are left behind, so to speak, have to live without her and live without our loved ones who have gone before us, but they are already experiencing it. And that reminds me of 1 Corinthians 15 when Paul tries to encourage people and he says, 
dear brothers and sisters, what I'm saying is that our physical bodies cannot inherit the kingdom of God. These dying bodies cannot inherit what will last forever. But let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever. And we who are living will also be transformed. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. Then when our dying bodies have been transformed into bodies that will never die, the scripture that says this will be fulfilled. The scripture says, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is your victory? O oh, death, where is your sting? For sin is the sting that results in death. But thank God, he gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus the Messiah. So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. You know, I, I think when somebody dies, we question God a little bit. Why did you take her away? Why did she have to die? And I think we sometimes forget that we live in a fallen world. We live in a world where, where bad things happen. And a lot of that has to do with the kind of world God has created. But what God wants us to do in these moments is not to blame him, but to rely on him. Scripture says God is love. And, of course, we know God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father but through me. So on this solemn day, as we mourn the loss of Laura, and as we are saddened by the end of her life, I would say, let's take this moment, even right now, to open ourselves up to God and honor Laura's life and her legacy. And I want to put it to you again. I didn't know Laura's life, so I can't speak to the things that she did or the things that she went through in any sort of detail. So I want to encourage you to share that with one another and share the good things. But I know we can honor her by committing ourselves to God and opening ourselves up to Him. This is another prayer that I'd like us to close our eyes for. Father, thank you for this incredible opportunity that we have to devote our lives to you. Lord, we know that we're not perfect and that we've sinned, but we also know that you want to forgive us. So, Father, I ask that you forgive us of our sins. Allow us to have the hope of eternal life in Jesus. And we thank you for your grace in Jesus' name. And as we... As we sort of close this time, I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything here. Jesus said, Do not be afraid, I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead, behold, I am alive forevermore. He said, Because I live, you shall live also. And the apostle Peter said, In this we greatly rejoice, that you have been distressed by various trials. And boy, was she distressed by various trials. But what, look what it says. That the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus the Messiah. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, you believe in him. You greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. And again, nothing comes to mind more when I think of Laura than her devotion and her faith. But even in her life, and she wasn't perfect, no, no one is, right? I want, I want to say this poem and have you think about Laura and really hold on to the things that matter. This is from, let's imagine Laura speaking to us, and it's called How to Remember Me. A time will come when my life will cease. But when that time comes, I ask that you remember these things. Bury my body, but don't bury my beliefs. 
Bury my heart, but don't bury my love. Bury my eyes, but not my vision. Bury my feet, but not the path of my life. Bury my hands, but don't bury my diligent efforts. Bury my shoulders, but not the concerns that I carry. Bury my voice, but not my message. Bury my mind, but don't bury my dreams. Bury me, but don't bury my life. If you must bury something, let it be my faults and my weaknesses, but let my life continue on in you. I'm gonna pray one final time here. This, this will be the time to uh, allow each of us to, to say our goodbye. And again, even after this short ceremony is, is over, you are welcome to stay here for as long as you need to say goodbye, to say something to Laura, or to have flowers make them long to the castle. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you that you are our God and our Father, our Comforter. In the midst of our natural sorrow, we ask for your supernatural comfort and grace. In the face of death, we thank you for your gift of eternal life. In the face of separation, we thank you for the eternal reunion that we so eagerly anticipate. Lord, it says in scripture that from dust we have been made and to dust we will return. So we thank you for Laura's life and we commit her father back to this earth from which our bodies were originally created earth to earth ashes to ashes and dust to dust and father we rejoice in the fact that she will have life again in the resurrection almighty god into your hands we commend your daughter Lord. in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through jesus the messiah our lord we anticipate that day when we will be raised to life at the coming of our Lord, and we will find great comfort in knowing that we shall forever be together with the Lord. We thank you, Father, that in these days and weeks and months to come, that these realities and the abiding presence of your Spirit will strengthen us, sustain us, and comfort us, we who are Lord's friends and family. We pray in Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah. In his name we pray. Amen. Thank you for coming today. And again, this is a short ceremony, but I want you to take the time to say goodbye. I just want to end with one more scripture. What It says at the very end of the Bible, what we have to look forward to. A new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth passed away. There's no longer any sea and I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem. You know, about a month ago when I visited Laura, we spoke about each of our experience when we first saw Jerusalem in person. I told her about what I experienced, about what she experienced, and how emotional it was. Well, how much greater when new Jerusalem comes. And there will be no more, as it says, Behold, the tabernacle of God is among people, and he will dwell among them. And they shall be his people. And God himself will be among them and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no longer there will no longer be any death there will no longer be any mourning or crying or pain the first things have passed away and he who sits on the throne says behold I am making all things new so I pray that we will take comfort in these words and that while we are saying goodbye to Lord today that we will never forget her We'll always hold on to the hope of seeing her again and that's the hope that we have in jesus i hope that there is a better day coming so i encourage you to reach out to him be open to him and never forget Lord. thank you um maybe as as each of you take the time to say goodbye or, or, or do whatever you have to do there was a second song requested called days of elijah